Di ba? Kung ano yung meron tayo, kung magandang lalaki man tayo, maganda tayo, matalino, o ano pa man, lahat ng blessing na Diyos sa atin. No? And dapat, ganitin natin for His purpose. He must not put limits to our giving. Yan, ano ba ito sa inyo naman? Uh, limiting our giving. Uh, ano ba yung pwede natin ibalik sa sa Diyos? Sabi ko mga kanina, ito yung ano eh. Uh, normally, sa tao daw, muli na yung evangelize, yung bulsa. No, kasi, ang hirap po. Malalalim, lumalalim sa yung bulsa natin. You know? So, ano ba yung dapat yung attitude natin towards? Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, sa, sa Biblia, mayroon nasusunod about a tenth of your earnings. So, yung nakaw na yung tithes, kaya ka ng tithes, tenth yan, ikapok sa Tagalog. And the sa sa Catholic uh, religion, hindi naman tayo nagbibigay na magbigay ng attempt o hindi gaya sa ibang religion na talagang nakalista yan, magkano yung swerto mo, may hindi mo lang kapag may ano ha, 10,000 kasi yung swerto mo yung 10,000. Yun, no? so, mga ganun yung mga, yun yung mga listahan. No? Sa isa ibang religion, kung saan sa atin, yan yun. Pero natin, ay nagwisto tuloy si Mike. Anyway, Uh, anyway, ano ah, uh, yun actually, yung, yung typing na to is uh, given for the work of God. Hindi naman kailangan ng Diyos ang pera eh. Pero, kailangan niya ng mga instrument o mga tao na gagawa ng trabaho. So, doon na yun, nakupunta yung tithes. And meron din pagkakaiba yung as giving, no? Ito yung uh, helping or giving uh, something to the poor. Ayan. Uh, anyway, Pag may kumakatok ba sa gundaga nyo? <laughs> Hindi pinay na yun. <laughs> Kasi yung darumalik sa atin, pag kumalok na, kakatokin mo rin. <laughs> Kala mo ka naman kung kumatok ka. Mas <laughs> malakas pa rin. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, earlier in our life, natutunan namin na, natutunan naman na maraming sindikato. No? Na, uh, kasi kung minsan makikita nyo, Uh, yung, at the end of the day, may isang sakyan na pipikapin yung mga nandun sa gilid, tapos nagbibilangan ng pera. Yung mga nanginibus nila. So, ako, yung tiyan sa pinuro ko rin nila tayo, puno-puno lagi ng biskuit yung gilid ng kotse ko. Sabi nga sa akin, pag may sumasakay sa kotse, Uy, Chris, ayaw mong magutuman na. So, ipipipatin sa akin yung tao sa akin. Kasi every time na yung kumakatang sa akin, hindi ka magpagkain. Alam niyo dito sa may C5 Santolan, every morning may mga friends ako dyan na kumakatok sa akin, hindi ka pala miskrim. Alam niyo, <coughs> tumang-tawa ako pagka nakikita ko na kung kaya ka na miskrim, tinakain nila kasi alam ko saan nila yung early morning. Okay. Kasi sabi ko, sige, kung sindikato man yan at kinukuha yung pera niyo, surely hindi nila kukuha yung tumit ng mga ito kasi nirege yun sa sa loob dyan. Kaya ako marami, marami ako lagi ng ano, uh, biskuit. Diba? Kaya sabi sa'yo, ayaw mong magutuman, ha? <laughs> yung mga kaibigan ko, pinapakain ko. For where your pleasure is, there also your heart will be. Sabi sa Matthew chapter 6. So, ano yung kasama sa strength na sinasabi natin, ano? We do not own our time, we will live our gym. So, brothers and sisters, be generous with our time. Ano yung sabihin nito? Uh, normally, pagka may tao na lumapit sa atin na may problema, ano yung ginagawa natin? <coughs> Minsan, ay sorry, di ba ang mabali ako? Ay, teka lang, umiting na ako. Maalis tayo. Bakit? Sabi ko, bakit ganun yung attitude ng tao? So, yung, yung mga nakakausap ko, natatakot pa lang sila kasi baka utangan sila. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi lahat ng problema. Na may problema, pera. Sabi ko, ang marami. No? Kasi, kasi sa totoo lang, sa, sa office or sa meral ko, ako yung ano, ako yung iiyakan, ako yung takbuhan. Yan, nakikita yung may kiber, no? kausap sa tatap sa nasulok, umiiyak, kausap ako, ganyan. So, sarili na yung boss ko na nakikita ako na yung isang paglapit sa akin, yung kausap ko, umiiyak, ay sorry, sorry, kung sige, kung sige. So, sinasabi ko sa iba, 
huwag tayong maging maramot sa oras tayo. Kasi ano eh, normally naman, yung mga nangihilang o oh, may hilang advice, kailangan lang nila ng someone na makikilig at saka maging tayo. So, hindi yan ang umutang. Hindi. Siguro sa isang libong ano, lumapit sa atin, isa lang yung unang utang ng pera. So, pero yung 999, kailangan lang nila talaga ng nakikinig, maging tayo yan, konting advice. So, kaya sabi ko nga, let's be generous with our time. Huwag natin ipagmarabot kasi hindi naman atin yung time eh. Kasi hindi mo alam, bukas pa kalawa. Di ba? Tinawag ka na. Eh paano? Wala ka ng time kay Kitigay. Di ba? And another thing, brothers and sisters, dapat balance yung natin buhay natin. Normally, meron tayong professional life. Di ba? Kasi kailangan natin yung buhay. Kung hindi na. Di ba? Pero dapat meron din tayong emotional life. Yung oras para sa ating pamilya. But most importantly, ito yung laging nawawala sa atin, yung spiritual life. But, normally, sinasabi natin, ako, bata pa ako, tsaka na yung spiritual, spiritual, bata na ito naman ako mamamatay. So, sa totoo lang, brothers and sisters, di ba? Sino rin ito ang siguradong, siguradong bukas buhay pa siya? Wala. No? Kaya huwag natin sabihin na, tsaka na lang yung, ano, yung spiritual, kasi bata pa naman ako. Ano ba naman ako magsabi ko? Hanggang kayo lang tayo, mabubuhay pa ang buhay ng Diyos. And loving God as the greatest idea, no? So, ang, ang, ang uh, model natin palagi dito is Jesus Christ. Alam nyo naman itong kwentong ito, di ba? Na during that time, ito yung last hours na ni Jesus Christ, eh. Alam nyo ba yung kwentong ito, di ba? Sabi niya, alam niya na huwilihin na siya ng mga uh, Roman soldiers. So, sabi niya sa mga apostoles, Uy, samahan niyo ako, magdadasalan ako. This is my last hour. Sabi niyo, tulungan ka, samahan niyo na ako. Pero, kita niyo yung mga apostoles. Anong ginawa ng mga apostoles niyo rin na tayo? Natulog. <laughs> Tinulugan. Ha? So anyway, ito yung time na nagdadasal si Jesus Christ. Ipinakita ng Diyos sa kanya yung kanyang passion. Yung mangyayari sa kanya. No? Yung pagkuli sa kanya, pagtaling sa kanya, pagbibay ng... Uh, crown of swords, maghagupit sa kanya, and finally yung kanya death and crucifixion. Nung nakita yun ni Jesus Christ, <coughs> ang totoo kwento nito, pinagpawisan siya ng tubig at dugo. Nung natin yung alam, bakit ito nga ba yung nakikin? Sa sobrang tension niya, sa sobrang takot niya, pinagpawisan siya ng dugo. Yung ilang tubig. And sabi ng mga medical doctors, pwede raw mangyari yun. Pagka ang tao ay sobrang natakot, pwede siyang pagpawisan na ito. Okay. Okay, huwag yung pinatakot ako sa akin. Baka pagpawisan ng tubo niya. Baka naman. Warning na. Anyway, ganun, ganun siya natakot. Pero in spite na nakita niya kung ano yung gagawin sa kanya, sabi niya, Father, pwede ba? Huwag na natin ituloy. Kasi sobrang siya natakot eh. Take this cup of suffering away from me, Lord, huwag na lang. Pero, sabi niya, not my will, however, but your will to them. But Lord, kung talagang ito yung plano mo sa akin, your will to them. Huwag na lang siya. Ano man yung plano ng Diyos, ano man yung plano mo sa akin, sabi niya, ituloy na lang. Your will to them. And, uh, Si Jesus Christ was actually dedicated to accomplishing his mission and uh, ito naman talaga yung mission niya. Diba? To die on the cross. Sabi nga ni Jesus Christ, My food is to obey the way of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me. And uh, alam niyo ba, brothers and sisters, di ba kanina kinikwento ko yung yung Qatar two years ago? So last year, meron na naman dumating na papel sa amin, bagong appointment. So in-appoint kami na sector head ng Central B, sa kabilang bakod yun. Kasi for 25 years, dito po kami lumaki sa Central A. So ito yung ano, hometown namin. And uh, in-appoint kami na bagong sector head. Actually, yung, yung sector na po na yun is uh, sektor na maraming kailangan ayusin. 
na ang dami pong binigay na listahan sa akin ng council para ayusin po sa kabilang sector. So, sabi ko, Lord, ito na naman, bakit, bakit kami? Ganun din ang talo ko eh. Why me? Why? Bakit kami ni Maridik ang naayos nito? Eh, alam nyo, nung last Holy Week, di ba normally pag Holy Week, nag-reflect nag 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 tayo? Diba? Ito yung tayo ng reflection. So, sinasabi ko, Lord, bakit uh, ang dami yung pinapagawa sa amin? Bakit nahihirapan kami sa sa buhay? So, ganun yung tanong ko. Ano ba hindi naman ako sinagot ng Diyos na nun eh? Sabi ko, Lord, ito ba yung gusto mong ginagawa natin? Yun ba yung tanong ko sa Diyos? Kasi at that time, hindi ko na mabalance yung trabaho ko. At saka yung trabaho ko sa Power School Guys. Nasa opisina nga ako, ginagawa ko naman trabaho sa Power School Guys. Kaya, yan nga sabi ni Mike, Kuya, hindi ko na nagagawa yung report mo. Teka lang, sabi ko, magawa akong pakit. <laughs> Lagi akong umuli sa report. Anyway, hindi hindi ako sinagot ng Diyos verbally. Ano yung ginawa ng Diyos sa akin? Pinakita niya sa akin, pinash niya lahat ng blessings na binibigay niya sa amin at saka sa pamilya. Grabe, alam niyo, brothers and sisters, naiyak ako kasi napahiya ako eh. Ang piling ko, sobra-sobra yung binibigay namin sa Diyos. Ang piling ko, parang nakapuso na kami ng Diyos kasi dahil binibigay ng service. Pero grabe, wala pa na sa kalikinan ng blessings na ipinibigay niya sa amin ng asawa pati sa mga anak na. So sabi ko, Lord, sorry, akala ko ako yung sobra-sobra. Ikaw pa rin yung sobra-sobra din yung hindi sa akin. So, as a result, brothers and sisters, actually, last year pa ako nagpahay na muna eh. Ang early retirement kasi parang maas, maayos ko yung buhay namin. Magawa ko yung service and of course, bukal pa rin naman tayo sa family kasi nasasacrifice na rin tayo sa family. Pero, Last year, hindi ako kumiyaga ng HR kasi for a specific reason. So, at least next year na lang. Pagkatanggap ko nung noon, tsaka ka mag-file. So, nag-file ako ng April and nag-early retirement po ako ng end of June. So, jobless na po. Ano lang po ako, full-time worker ng all the time worker na po ako ng Diyos. And I'm so happy kasi nagkakaroon na ako ng time for the family. Dapat God, family, and others. So, yung tawag ko yung others. Kasi ito ko yung sa dalawang priorities sa buhay. So, brothers and sisters, no? In conclusion, uh, hindi naman po ganun kahirap, no? Uh, ang sinasabi dito sa, sa loving God. And uh, we just have to decide to commit, to know God, and to trust Him. Kasi alam niyo, brothers and sisters, Uh, mahirap magmahal ng tao o ng isang bagay na hindi mo kilala. Kaya napaka-importante sa atin na makilala natin ang Diyos kasi talaga imposible na magmahal ng isang tao na hindi mo kilala. Pero pag nakilala mo talaga ang Diyos, tsaka mo lang siya talaga ay hindi sa kanyang lahat. And we cannot do it by ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. No? So dapat, dapat nga, uh, ang best friend natin pala kanya is God. Holy Spirit. So, uh, before we end, yan, meron na kang iti sa akin na uh, magandang magandang share, no? <laughs> yan, so, Peter, 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 I'm not feeling well. I get this. I have days that I want to go. But good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Before anything else, I'd like to introduce myself. Especially to those people who don't really know me. Pero itong ating participants, kilala-kilala ako. They know my, all my curves and that. Kasi mga pamangkin ko yan. 
And then anyway, I'm Tita Bibi. I'm the significant other, the beloved and loving wife of <laughs> Tita Peter. And yes. uh, we have been blessed with three kids and we have been in couples for 23 years now. Wow, yeah. yeah. Pero unlike Tito Chris and Tito Mimo, na talaga, they have devoted their time and their service to the Lord and the involvement you know, with couples for Christ. Um, we're not that active. It's only recently with Tito Mimo's uh, yes. well, persistence. Oh, it's we salute your patience. That's why we, we're kind of active now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for Mika and for Mikey and my friend Jamie, I would like to yes, share with you congratulate you for being here with us. And uh, one thing that I can really tell you is that it is such a great blessing to be in Focus for Christ. For one thing, um, in this community you will find real friends, true friends. Who will be uh, who will become your lifelong friends? You yes. found them in our brothers and sisters in our household and the community as well, uh, and they will be there for you to pray for you, pray with you, to uh, laugh with and uh, support you in times of in happy moments and even in difficult moments, and that's what we are very thankful for. Uh, and uh, we continue to be bonded, especially with the household that we're in. More than 14 years already. Yeah, and uh, because our relationship is set in our lives, and uh, we are moved by the community spirit. I'm here today, uh, standing before you, to share about the topic for the Union Loving God. As our Tito Chris has uh, emphatically discussed with you, loving God is the highest idea, should be our highest idea. God wants us to love Him so much that He made it into a commandment. The first of the two greatest commandments, that is to love God with all our heart, with all our mind and soul, and with all our strength. And of course, the other one is to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Um, I would say that, I don't know, medyo ano lang, loving God is not really an easy thing to do. We are asked and required to love Him with all our heart, our mind, and soul, and our strength. Parang it's such a daunting task, right? Uh, it requires total commitment, a serious decision to put Him first above all else, above all things, above ourselves, above our family, our possessions, our businesses, our jobs, and to place His will and interest above our own. The more you think about it, the more that it seems to be very difficult. It is really um, a daunting commitment, not an easy thing to commit to yourself totally to God. Why? Maybe one reason is because of fear. Fear that we will fall short, that we cannot keep our commitment. It may be because we are not ready to let go and let God, and allow Him to take total and full control of our lives. It may also be because of certain attachments to relationships, to our jobs, and to other material things. Lack of faith and trust can also be factors. We might be thinking that if we surrender everything to God, what will happen to us? How do we meet our needs? It can also be that we cannot imagine how to provide for our families, for the needs of our families. If we let go and let God, when there's nothing concrete and tangible that we can hold on to. For some of us, this may seem to be valid justifications on why we cannot give our all, our total commitment that God is asking uh, of us, why we cannot love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and with all our strength. Loving God was not easy for me also. I know that I love God, and I want to show Him that I love Him, that I really do love Him. In my prayers, I've always included my sister when I was child. I've always included the phrase, let thy will be done. Not mine, Lord, but thy will. Whatever I'm asking for, whenever I'm asking for something, I also always add, it's your will, Lord. If it's your will, let it be done. That's how I want to show my love for him, by being obedient to his will and allowing him to take control of my life. But it must be true that there will come a time when our Father 
will test the disposition of our hearts. Not so much because he wants us hurt, but because he has other plans for us. That moment came to us when we lost our eldest son, Xavier, to an accident in January of 2005. Xavier was the oldest of our kids. Uh, his Mika's and Mike's age, they're very close. Because they grew up together. Of all my kids, Xavier was closest to me also. Maybe because he was my eldest, and he has a way of ingratiating himself to older people. He gravitated more to people older than, much older than him. He would rather hang out with our neighbors who are even older than us, his parents. We were not just mom and son. We were friends also. He shared with me his fondest dreams and aspirations in a story-like manner. He shared with me everything which happened in his life, from friends, school, his dream, dreams, even his nightmares. And he was special in a way that moms usually fight their firstborn children special. We were in the same wavelength all the time, most of the time, that we complete each other's sentences and laugh at our own corny jokes. We had a volatile relationship also. Maybe because we can read, almost read each other's thoughts and minds. And that can be a dangerous thing at times. More than all these intricacies, however, we know that we dearly love each other. We truly love each other. He never failed to end his conversation with me with the words, I love you, Mom. In fact, he even influenced all his classmates in Southridge to tell their mommies and daddies that they love them. He was often teased before by his classmates. Why are you always, when you call your mom, you always say, I love you, mom. And he told them, why don't you love your mom too? Mm -hmm. And from then on, his classmates also told their moms that they love them. So in fact, upon his graduation, some of the moms approached me and thanked me. And I asked them what for. And they told me that it was Savior who was influential in telling, in, in, in moving our sons to tell, I love you to us again. On that fateful day that he passed, Peter and I went to the with somebody, and then we went to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church to pray for our kids. Um, we passed to us our one, we went to the Adoration Chapel. But upon reaching it, the chapel was so dark and it was suffocating. So we moved to the main uh, church, and uh, on the way, I approached one of the nuns and even told her that so dark, there's no light in the chapter. And she retorted that it cannot be, there's always light in the adoration chapter. But, so, on hindsight, it seems that, that it was a foreboding of things to come. A few hours after we reached our home in Manila, I got a call from Ateneo, saying that Savior figured in an accident, and that I should proceed to the rooftop of Prince David for the beginning of It was only there that I learned that my son fell. From the 27th floor of um, Burgundy Place and landed on the next building, on the 19th floor, the rooftop of Prince David. There were so many people kneeling around his body. There were the police, the residents of the building, his classmates from Ateneo, some faculty as well. But nobody was ever near his body. They were all waiting for the SOPO as they still have to investigate if there was any foul play involved there. When I got there, I saw my son lie on the pavement as if peacefully as me, with no wound or trace that he suffered from the fall. Even his eyeglasses and his phone were intact. Peter was not with me at that time. He went back to the office after our trip in Lipa, and it took him some time before he was able to get to the building. Only my daughter was with me and our neighbors, Yaya. Then Peter came, and then my his mama came, and uh, another nephew came also. Yeah. It took two hours. By the time I got there, but when I got there, it was already a few hours after Savior came. It took uh, two more hours before the paramedics and the ambulance came, and we were finally able to bring him to the hospital where he was displayed, DOA. All throughout the time when we were waiting for the ambulance, I prayed so hard as I've never prayed before, that God will let him live. 
Initially, I had no idea if he was alive or dead. I was just <coughs> beside him and wouldn't leave him for fear that I might hurt him more. I knew in my heart that he, he must not have survived the fall. Nobody would. But I was asking for a miracle from God and was hoping against hope that he would grant me my most fervent prayer. Halfway through the waiting time and inconsolable as I was at the time, I was kneeling before my son and I saw a mist like a fog hovering above me, then coming down on me and embracing me. And then I suddenly felt calm and serene, and I felt at peace. It was very surreal, and then I found myself saying, Lord, if this is the cross that you want me to carry, I will do so. Let your will be done. I will only ask that as I carry the cross, that you be with me and help me carry it, especially at times when the burden gets too heavy. That was the time that I surrendered to God, my son, glory and trusting that it was his will, that everything that happened was according to his plan. For us parents, our children are our greatest treasures, more than all the material things and possessions that we have, more than our homes, our health, our businesses, or whatever that we hold dear to us. Our family, especially our children, are our greatest treasures. They are God's gifts to us. And I have always been thankful and grateful to God for the gifts that He has given me to us, Peter and I. And we never failed in expressing our gratitude and thanksgiving to Him for the gifts of our children and our family. And even in our prayers, we always say that. But as they say, all things, new Lord God, come to an end. Time came when God asked that I return the gift, the gift of my beloved son, Savior, so that he may enjoy his company in heaven. I was left with no choice, and thus I surrendered him back to him. While I treasure love and value so much to give, I also treasure love and value the giver. And so it has come to the point, it's more than the gift, it is the giver. If it's your will, Lord, let thy will be done. If this will glorify you, Lord, let his death be for your glory. Praise God as he is a faithful God. In all my grief and misery, he never left me. I told him that I would carry the cross, but I asked him to please be with me as I carry it. And he was there, and he is still here with me. He was there in the people that he surrounded me with. My family, of course, my husband Peter, who remains to be my pillar of strength. My mom and my sisters, who were with me, always round the clock to give us support. So with Peter's family, our brothers and sisters in CFC, especially in our household, with Jing and Muni, Xiao and Ed, Mimi and Tony, the Ping and Lucy, the Ping was still with us at the time. Um, Beth and died, they have not left for the States at that time. Tito Bert and Tita Nieva. And uh, eventually we were joined by Tito, Tito Bing and Tita Ellen. They were with us most nights, almost every night, praying with us and for us. And we can never thank them enough for being with us in our darkest hours. All the questions, doubts, and fears within our hearts and minds were answered through prayers through the scriptures, in our dreams, and even in other people's dreams. We sent special people who made it easier for us to really understand and accept what happened to Savior and to us, and giving us assurance that he is where, where he should be and that he is happy. There were so many people praying for him for, and for us, people of all religious denominations, not just Catholic Christians but also born again Christians and even Buddhist monks praying for him. Knowing that there were so many people praying for him gave him peace. And then he sent Malay to Venetia to our life. She's also just lost her daughter to a tragic fire a month before in Xavier's passing. We never really knew each other at the time. I know her because of her celebrity being the wife of the then speaker, but not really personally. She knew about Savior from Kate Gordon, who was our neighbor at that time, and she called me and introduced herself and condoled with me. From then on, she would go 
uh, call me almost every night. And we would talk about our kids, about how we're feeling, how about we, uh, we're, how, uh, how, uh, how we're coping up. And then we became friends and got together until we established Inang Amila Sa Anak Foundation, or Ina Foundation, which is a support group for mothers who have lost a child, or in some cases, children. In initially, it was all just informal support to grieving moms, where you talk, or visit each other, share experiences, pray with each other until we were able to seek the help of professionals and psychologists who were able to put together a manual on how to deal with grief. In one year, we were able to put up in a healing center where we would hold grief mentoring programs for grief mothers. With the help of GSWD, social workers, and other volunteers, we were able to provide assistance in terms of psychosocial support to numerous mothers who have lost a child. Eventually, we turned it over, the Inang Healing Center, to the SWP for the management and operations, so that uh, it will be as we ask them to include it in, um, as part of the uh, programs and projects, and thus secure an allotment in their budget, so that it will be sustainable, so that it will remain operational. 13 years from its establishment, established in 2006. Inan Healing Center is operational and is sadly thriving. Sad why? Because we don't really want any more new clients. But as the years pass, there are even increasing number of mothers who are losing their children, have lost a child. And it continues, uh, the center continues to provide the much needed support to grieving mothers, not just here in Metro Manila, but in other parts of the country as well. Through the grief mentoring program that we put up, we were able to help thousands of mothers deal with the loss of a beloved child and help them get back to the daily grind of living, fully functioning, whole and complete as a person with acceptance of the new normal in their lives, and that is living with the loss of a beloved child. With Inan, I have come to realize God's purpose for Savior's passing. I pray to God that it, it will glorify me. Let Savior's death be for His glory. And He answered my prayer. Loving God, obeying Him, and surrendering to your will, to Him, uh, to him, surrender so your will to him may not be easy, but if you commit to it, he will show you that his love for you is far greater than you can ever imagine. Truly, he is a faithful and a loving and living God. And I pray and hope that we will all continue to praise and commit to love him. It's a post prayer A few months after Savior's passing, on his birthday actually, my phone's alarm went. I was so surprised at what was written beside Savior's name. It says Fiat is love. I cannot remember when, why, or how he got there. I cannot remember myself typing it beside Savior's birthday and setting it on a line. Definitely, I must have done it way before Savior's passing. Not really understanding the full extent of what Fiat to God will entail. But now, on high time, and happy in a way, because now I know that even before, I have already made a commitment to the Lord to love and obey Him, even unknowingly and unconsciously. And I was able to live up to Him and not fail Him. And He has never failed me. I would say that I am still a work in progress as far as loving God is concerned, and not really there yet. But by God's grace and in His time, I know that my love for Him, though not perfect, as His love is perfect, I will give all my best to love Him. And that time will come when I can truly say that I love the Lord, our God, with all my heart, with all my mind and soul, with all my soul. Praise God. Actually, first time ko narinig yung kwento niya. 
na basa ko lang sa January yung sa Facebook. So, napakaganda yung story nila. Sabi ko nga kanina, at this time, minsan, madaling mahali ng Diyos pagka puro magagandang bagay ni Mahali sa atin. Pero during that time na talaga may mga trials, may mga test. Doon talaga na natitest kung gano'y yung faith, kung gano'y yung kaya na ipigay sa Diyos. And on the, on the positive side, kung makikita nyo, ang ganda nung kung may effect nung ginawa nila ng ano. Para foundation ba yan, di ba? Parang foundation. So, ang daming natulungan ng mga tao. So, actually, hindi yung pala yung purpose ng Diyos for allowing them to experience yung ganun pa yan. So, as we end, brothers and sisters, <coughs> A uh, prayer lang for all of you. Dear Lord, into your hands I place my worries, cares, and troubles. Into your wisdom I place my path, direction, and my goal. Into your love I place my life. So may God be praised, brothers and sisters.